Hey guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to share you about my experience with having autism. Okay. Here are the challenges I've had with autism. It makes me lack focus sometimes in class, and it makes it harder for me to get adjusted to new things. The advantages of me having autism is it's taught me to be true to myself, and it's gave me some talent. I've been given the ability to tell notes by ear. When I was younger, I had to learn everything in the music manner. You know, I'm the older sibling in my family. I have one younger sister. Even though being the oldest is fun, I always hated it because I need more experience. And I always said, I don't like being the oldest. Because I need more experience. Because it's harder to be the oldest sibling in the family with a disability. I only said that because of my disability. I'm a year older than everyone in my grade. It's been kind of hard because I've not gotten notified about what you can do at a certain age. Since I'm older than everyone. My parents are both doctors. So in order for them to become a doctor, they had to do a seven-year residency program. Theirs was at the University of Minnesota. And Minnesota was just a temporary place to live. We couldn't move to Connecticut in 2004 because they weren't done with residency yet. They didn't want me to start kindergarten in 2004 because after the first year, and we would move to Connecticut, I would have a double transition, and they were worried about me having a double transition because of my autism. My family was originally supposed to live in Easton, Connecticut, so we can have more room to add more facilities, especially because my backyard is a bit small and sloped and isn't good for certain facilities, and especially because my parents mainly wanted to live in a neighborhood close to school and close to family, but... We chose to live in Fairfield, Connecticut instead because the Easton and Reading, Connecticut school district wasn't supportive enough for my autism. When I took piano lessons when I was in second grade, I found the ability, I found out that I had the ability to tell notes by ear. When I was in second grade, me and some boy with major autism created too much chaos because we made immature noises. So as a result, we were not allowed to be in the same class in third and fourth grade. Well, he left school in middle of fourth grade. So when I was in fourth grade, when I joined the orchestra, I was fascinated when I found out what the sharps and flats notes were. When I was in fifth grade, when I joined the band, I was fascinated on how the French horn notes were different than the traditional notes. Because my autism is mild, I had no idea that the reason why I was in all special education groups was because I have autism. And I always questioned, why do I have to go to the learning center during homeroom when I'd rather stay in homeroom and chat with my folks? Homeroom might be the only time I ever get to chat with them. In middle school, it was really hard when I was interacting with people about dating and the special education teachers would scold me and tell me, you know, that's inappropriate and interrupt me. It was hard. Because I have autism, I feared about how to ask friends to hang out on the weekends to do and do fun activities because I've been fearful that they are too busy. When I was in middle school, I had to be in a friendship group called Men's Group. Now, Men's Group met in the counseling center once a week during lunch and once a month in the Dean's Lounge during lunch. Men's group may be a group on how to make friends and how to solve problems, but there were some downsides I faced with men's group. It was hard enough going there during lunch because it was difficult for me to carry my tray to lunch bunch 
having to carry my binder and lunch at the same time since I had different teachers for every class. It was hard to walk upstairs with food in your hand. I had to miss a lot from lunch and spending time with the traditional folks in the cafeteria that delayed my time with going when the dean had to make a big announcement and that I couldn't cut in line without a pass. But that wasn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem I faced with men's group was the men's group gatherings. Worst part about it was I didn't figure out what the problem with those men's group gatherings was till the middle of eighth grade. The problems were it wasn't a good fit for my traditional friends. It was making them feel left out because they were thrown all the time at random occasions. The occasion had nothing to do with men's group at all. But here was a bigger problem with those men's group gatherings. It kept me in a bubble. It made me feel like I was a lot more associated with the men's group folks than the traditional folks. Probably kept me from being invited to just to traditional parties that were held by some of the traditional folks. It probably maybe even kept my chances of maybe getting a girlfriend, although middle school's a young age to get a girlfriend. Yeah. And although, you know. Anyways, made me feel like others didn't realize that traditional girls, girls who are not in Learning Center, could be a, a good girl for me to be with. And... Being in that men's group bubble didn't make my parents realize that other folks who are not in men's group can be one of my true friends as well. And it made me believe that you're going to be friends with everyone in men's group. But men's group may be a group on how to make friends and how to solve problems. And, you know, but even though it's about that, you're not always going to be friends with everyone in men's group. You're not even going to like everyone, possibly. You you may not get along with everyone in men's group. And, you know, it was hard because I didn't figure that out till like, eighth grade, the middle, and, like, I tried skipping, but I was told by the psychologist that I can't skip men's group, and I, I could face a consequence if I did. Even so, to stay out of these men's group gathering troubles, my mom suggested me throwing one at the middle of eighth, the end of eighth grade, I said no. When I was in a freshman in high school, my IEP for my autism required Learning Center to be every day. I was very upset with that, and it made it harder for me to spend time with the traditional folks after an unsuccessful way of throwing men's group gatherings in middle school and after it transitioned to group, which was smaller than men's group. And you know, with this not choir thing, it didn't make me realize of what friends group of interests I mainly belong in. I was upset because I felt like the folks were excluding me from choir and treating me like the antagonist of choir. I was also upset since people never got to experience how great my voice was and never made any positive judgment on how great of a singer I am. And I was even upset that there were some folks I never got even a chance to meet because of me not being in choir and I was extremely jealous that others got to meet them and I didn't. When I was in a play called Reisenheim when I was in eighth grade, Everyone else went to the music when we were learning the songs, while I went to the words because of my ability to tell notes by ear. When I was a freshman in high school, my IEP for my autism also required me to be in all collaborative classes, and all those collab classes made me in a class where it was mostly kids from Learning Center, which was basically the same kids in other classes, it limited my chances of seeing non-learning center people. And it limited my chances of having a certain teacher. And I didn't like that. When I did Broadway Boot Camp's production of Shrek the Musical Junior, I starred as Papa Ogre. 
That was the first musical where I had a solo. Because of my ability to tell notes by ear, it took me a long time for me to learn my solo. When I auditioned for West Side Story, when I was a sophomore in high school, I was off key a little bit when I sang Something's Coming, since the song in the musical and in the movie are both in a different key because of my ability to tell notes by ear. Because I have the ability to tell notes by ear, when I auditioned for Chamber Singers, the choir teacher declined me the first time because I was struggling on reading notes since I was a lot more used to tell notes by ear. Because I was a lot more associated with the men's group in middle school, and the choir issue made it even harder to be more associated with the non-men's group folks, I still somehow felt like I was in that men's group bubble, despite the fact no men's group gatherings were held in high school. And because of me feeling like I was still in that men's group bubble, when I was a sophomore in high school, when none of the men's group folks were going to the sophomore dance, my mom thought I wasn't going to have a good time without the men's group folks, but I had an excellent time because I have friends who are not in men's group. I had a fun time even though no men's group folks were there. I even remember when my mom's like asking me to throw a men's group gathering when I was a junior in high school and I once again refused because of all the troubles that occurred with those men's group gatherings in middle school. I even remember, because I was, I still felt like I was in that bubble, when I was a junior in high school, I was very disappointed that I wasn't asked to a dance called Counties, which is basically a girls invite guys dance, and I believed it to be because I was in that men's group bubble, but that reason was false, as I got asked to the red and white dance senior year. When I was a junior in high school, for 18 months, I had an issue with a student in my friendship group after I used a number five voice at group after being frustrated over not being asked to counties. Because I still felt like I was in that men's group bubble, I almost had a chance of joining a different friendship group, which, to be honest, just because you're having a hard time with someone in your friendship group doesn't mean you get to leave. Stay in that group and learn to get along with that person. If you stay in that group, you'll get along more often with that person. I spent the fall 2018 semester at the University of New Haven. Now, it may have had an excellent music program, and I may have had great experiences with that school with the first nine weeks with the marching band, spending time with some folks, joining the clubs, eating the great food at the marketplace. But I had to leave that school at the end of the semester because the disability services wasn't supportive enough for my autism after I ended up getting mistreated since the director wasn't prepared if anything bad happened. Because I have autism, I also have to be cautious about choosing the right college not only making sure that it has a good music program, but also that the disability services are good, or if it has an autism program, you know? During my times of being out in the community in high school, it's been really hard to get socially involved since I'm all alone. It's pretty boring, and, you know, and it's been even more boring with this quarantine going on, learning how to get socially involved. Again, now, another thing, when I told you about how I was in that bubble, now, your true friends relies on who is supportive on you, who is caring to you, and who has a lot of common interests as you. Your true friends should not rely on people who are in men's group or ladies group. You know, you know, there could be some folks who are not in those kind of groups who might be a better fit for you for friendship. And also, the true girl for you to be with is one who is kind, caring, supportive, or true boy, and has a lot of common interests as you. Now, the true person 
for you to be with shouldn't rely on group. Because there could be some folks outside of that group who are a better fit for you to be with. I hope you liked my video. And I hope you liked my experience. You know? I hope you did.